This over here is the AMD Radeon RX 7600 XT. And this costs roughly around $330. For the same amount, you could also get something like this. The Intel Arc A770. In fact, the Intel one is slightly cheaper, but that's not all. We could also get an RTX 4060, which is even cheaper. Or the cheaper 8 gigabyte version RX 7600. Which one should you get? Which one is the best? Well, let's find out. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out Hookies through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get 25% off. Use your preferred payment method, including PayPal or bank card. Go to your orders and copy the key. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. Or you can buy Windows 11 Pro key instead. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get 25% off. Check out Hookies.com in the video description below. First, let's take a look at the specifications of the 16 gigabyte versus the 8 gigabyte also the 16 gigabyte version i have here is the asus tuf version which is very very big and it's the same size as the 7700 xd gpu and this also has two 8 pin pcie connectors even though it only pulls 190 watts which means that it doesn't necessarily need the second one but if you go beyond an overclock maybe you need that but you get 150 watts from here and 75 watts from the actual pca slot so that takes us already way above what this board needs there's also two biases quiet and performance mode always leave it, leave it at performance mode but this is a very very like kind of high-end cooler for this low-end gpu here and what is the actual difference between the 8 and the 16 gigabyte version well i've already said it as you can see from the specs everything else is exactly the same apart from the 16 gigabytes of vram and it's very very nice because this is one of the cheapest 16 gigabyte models of gpus that you can actually get while the arc a770 is quite interesting as well because it's a similar price there they've also upped the tdp a little bit on the 70 600 xd there so let's take a look at the benchmarks if you do want to check out my test bench setup then i'm going to leave it in the description below as well as the gpus that i'm comparing in this video if you ever want to pick any one of these up or check the price when talking about the price here is the difference between those prices so the 7600 i can see the cheapest that's available on amazon is around 260 dollars the 7600 xd is about 330 dollars you can get a little bit more expensive models as well and this is one of the more expensive models what i have here but they all perform within margin of error of each other so it doesn't really matter perhaps the build quality does matter in longevity uh, but let's put that on the side a little bit the rtx 4060 is actually 300 dollars so about nine percent cheaper the cheaper 7600 is about 20 percent cheaper and the arc a770 is actually also cheaper at around three percent i can see one going for around 320 dollars and i've seen them on sale for even less so if you want to pick up any of the arc cards you can get them all for about the same price the 7600 is the cheaper version in this bunch so let's take a look at the results of benchmarks first the geekbench just to kind of see where all these gpus are going to line up the 7600 is about three percent slower in the open seal and about 5.8 percent slower in the vulcan scores the 4060 is about 23.6 percent faster in open seal but about 4.6 percent slower in the vulcan scores the arc a770 is the fastest in this bunch at about 27.4 percent faster in the open seal seal scores and about 10.8 percent faster in the vulcan scores the 7600 is about 3.3 percent slower in the overall scores the gpu score is 7.8 percent slower so that's interesting the 4060 is up to 31 percent slower in photoshop which is absolutely crazy. That's the GPU score. The overall score is about 10.4% slower. And the ARC A770 is the fastest in this bunch and is about 0.5% faster. The GPU score is about 2.3% faster. Now, moving on to video editing and Puget Bench for Premiere Pro. This is Puget Bench 0.98 for Premiere Pro 23.6. Now, they don't have this benchmark version anymore. And if you want to test the version 1.0 benchmark, you have to use the budget bench for creators application which means that all of my previous testing results of some of the cards that i don't have anymore 
mean nothing. So I'll have to test some of these cards with the old test bench setup. The very important thing to mention about this benchmark is that the Arc GPUs actually have full hardware acceleration and support for its media engines on the Premiere Pro 24.0 version plus Premiere Pro software revisions, which means that this 23.6 here doesn't actually give us full performance of this Arc GPU. So when you're actually using and comparing these in real world or real life, you'd probably have a little bit more performance on the Arc. Now, if you want to see that video, stick around, hit subscribe, and then we'll find out in the future when I'll have to re-benchmark all of the GPUs again. In Premiere Pro 23.6, we can see that the 7600 with 8 gigabytes of VRAM is about 2 to 3% slower in the overall scores. The intraframe extended score is about 12.7% slower. But interestingly, the GPU effects extended are actually faster on the 7600, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But the intraframe extended, I'm assuming is faster on the 7600 XD because of the VRAM capacity, because we do clip the eight gigabytes of VRAM on Premiere Pro uh, benchmark here. The 4060 is about nine to 13% slower in the overall scores and some of the sub scores are 27% slower in the intra frame scores, but the GPU effects is quite a bit faster on the 4060, about 40% faster in the extended scores. The Intel Arc here, interestingly, the overall score is 3.5 and 3.3% slower in the extended and overall scores. But if we look at the long GOP, that's 36% slower and 25% slower in the standard, sorry, about 30% slower in the standard and extended scores. Now, this is the bit that actually is very, very good on Intel. And usually when you have iGPU enabled, you'll have QuickSync, which really supports H.264 and 5 codec playback and hardware acceleration, decoding, encoding of this. And as you can see, we're really quite a bit slower on the Arc compared to even NVIDIA or AMD. Now, AMD has very, very good uh, long GOP scores and their media engines are very, very good decoding or actually processing that. So I'm assuming with Premiere Pro 24 version, we're going to have better scores for long GOP, but how good and how much better? We'll have to see that. The GPU effect score is so much better though on the Arc. 71% faster on the Arc and about 30% in the standard, extended 71%, that's absolutely insane. So if we get a little bit better decoding and encoding on H.264 and 5, the Arc is probably a very, very, very good option for Premiere Pro. Moving on to Puget Bench for After Effects, and here we can see that the 7600 is about the same as 7600 XD. The 4060 is about 4% faster in the overall scores, but about 7.6% faster in the tracking score. I don't have the ARC scores here, the A770 did crash, so I didn't manage to actually complete the benchmark for After Effects. That doesn't mean that it's not supported in After Effects, it's just my benchmark crashed. I'll have to redo that in the future. Moving on to Puget Bench for DaVinci Resolve. And here we can see that the 16 gigabytes of VRAM really gives us a huge performance lift for this Radiant card. The 7600 is 18 to 20% slower in the extended and standard overall scores. The Fusion score is 27% slower. So as you can see, having that extra bit of VRAM for DaVinci Resolve, is probably worth the money coming from this 8 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes. Extra $70, probably worth it in this application. The RTX 4060 is about 13% slower in the standard overall scores. For some reason, the extended just crashed and I couldn't get it finished. I might have to improve that and get it benchmarked again. The RTX 4060 is about 13% slower in the standard overall scores. The extended overall scores didn't quite manage to complete that. I'll have to try that again, maybe in the future with the newer drivers. But the 4060 is quite a bit slower in here. And so is the Arc A770, about 26 percent slower which is interesting it's not as good in DaVinci Resolve. I'll have to retest that and see if this is to do with the drivers or if this is DaVinci Resolve revision. Interestingly the GPU effect score is 30 percent faster on the A770 compared to the TUF 7600 XD. So for video editing the 7600 XD actually is quite a solid pick for around $330. Maybe you can get it even cheaper because of the 16 gigabytes of VRAM. As you can see in Premiere Pro, it's leading the chat. So is it doing it on DaVinci Resolve. 
RTX 4060 really doesn't make quite a lot of sense here for video editing. By the way, if you're enjoying the t-shirt design, check out technotistore.com. There's some merch over there. Moving on to 3D, and let's take a look at what's the results here. And in V-Ray, we only have scores for RTX 4060 from NVIDIA because none of the other cards support V-Ray. So you're kind of stuck with NVIDIA there. In Octane Bench, exactly the same story there. So there's no point in showing you just one benchmark score. In Blender though, here we have scores for everything. So the 16 gigabyte version of the 7600 XD is about few percent faster. You can see the 8 gigabyte version is 1.5 to 3 percent slower. The RTX 4060 is 177 percent faster and up to 180 percent faster in the classroom scene. So that's almost three times faster than the 7600 XD. But interestingly the ARC A770 is about 56 to 66 percent faster on monster junk shop and classroom scenes when it comes to blender so even the intel card actually beats this amd radian card here which really shows that for 3d the amd card isn't very good for if you're doing 3d nvidia is the first pick if you're doing blender you're getting better price to performance for the a770 and lastly redshift which we unfortunately don't ha have support for the ARC A770, but the 7600 XT gets a very high score. And in fact, if I put the 7700 XT in the list here, the 7600 XT is faster than the 7700 XT because of the more VRAM. Redshift really loves to use all of the VRAM and the extra 4 gigabytes from 12 to 16 really matters here and we're getting a faster score than even a higher end gpu the 7600 is about 11.5 percent slower the 4060 is 71 percent faster we're very close to double the performance on the nvidia which just proves that for 3d amd really isn't very very good it might have very powerful rasterization performance in games but for 3d professionals i really don't recommend an amd card what about power draw that's where things get a little bit interesting. The 7600 XD pulls around 190 watts, which is 20 watts more than the 7600 and quite a bit more than the RTX 4060. The 4060 pulls only 115 watts. The ARC A770 is in the middle of these cards at 180 watts. So not a ton less, but still less. So what about this 7600 XD then? Is it worth it? Number one thing, I am happy that AMD makes the 16 gigabyte versions of this and gives us lots of VRAM for GPUs, which Nvidia really holds back. And if you want 16 gigabytes, you're gonna have to get the lower 16 gigabyte card is 4060 Ti version, the 16 gigabyte version, but that's not really that amazing. On AMD, we have this one. And if you do need a lot of VRAM, this is a great option. What's this card for? And is it good for creators? Number one, for photo editing, it's a great option. If you're looking to just do photo editing, 16 gigabytes of VRAM, it's a good option. But at the same time, I'm thinking the ARC A770 is even cheaper and probably even better for Photoshop and things for photo editing. So perhaps even go for that one because it's less power efficiency as well. Then moving on to video editing, and this is where this card really shines. It really beats out the A770. Perhaps with newer drivers and newer software versions, you can get a little bit more performance from the A770. But right now you can see that the 7600 XD is a much better option. It's definitely a lot better option than the 4060 from Nvidia because of the 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And if you're using DaVinci Resolve, this really is um, a very, very good option. In fact, one of the best options for around $300 GPUs. Gives you a ton of performance and the 16 gigabytes of VRAM really helps it out. For 3D, this card really isn't a good option. And that's where you really want to go with Nvidia or even Arc if you're on, in Blender. Really don't recommend it for that. Now, is this a solid option for $300? It kind of is if you're doing photo and video editing. But also, I think the Arc kind of is a little bit of an interesting pick because every single driver update, we're getting more and more performance out of this one. But the media engines inside here still don't have the full capabilities because 
we have dual media engines on the Intel Arc A770, but only single media engine on the 7600 XT. So I know that the Arc has still a bit more performance in store there, because we can see that in 3D, like in Blender, the Arc is quite a bit better than the 7600 XT. We have the same amount of VRAM, the card is actually smaller, you can get it a little bit cheaper, and the potential to get even more out of this card is really, really out there. So it depends if you want to risk it a little bit then the a770 is quite a solid option but if you just want solid performance that actually just works for now for 300 dollars for video editing especially for davinci resolve then radius is this one here i'd say for davinci resolve this is the best option but if you do want to build yourself the best bang for buck create a pc and don't waste money on any of the parts that don't give you any extra performance then check out the build guides in the video description below there is one for you whatever your budget is i'll explain everything down there with all the videos completely free go check it out and if you do have questions for me then reach out on minnect at 100 percent get back rate so all the dms that i'm getting around all the social medias i don't actually have time to get back but i always get back to the people who reach out on Minnect. So if you're serious about some of the questions and you need some answers from me, Minnect is the way to get an answer from me. Check it out, linked in the description below. Bye-bye.